So um, this is a, a word cloud that I created, um, and uh, some of y'all saw it last time. And it's just, you know, it's kind of all the things that, um, that internships involve. Either you get something from it or something to consider about it or things to, um, you know, th things that you can focus your internships in. There's all kinds of internships. Um, and they're uh, live action, animation, and everything in between. You know, it could be documentary, it could be news type things. Whatever you're interested in, we can certainly um, find, help you find um, a, a good internship and hopefully find a good fit for you for whatever you'd like to do. So, um, one of the most important things about anything in the business world is networking. And um, it's some people are naturals at it, some people don't want to do it, <laughs> but everybody's got to do it at some point if we want something. And so, um, so hopefully this um, tonight's lesson will help uh, ease that a little bit for you and give you some tools so that you can um, feel comfortable um, in networking situations. Um, the elevator pitch, yes, it's called that, you know, for the, the length of time, of time it takes to ride an elevator, you know, but it also can be for anything. It could be for, you happen to be at the copier and somebody walks in, you happen to be on a film set just visiting, and you see somebody that, oh my God, that's a person I wanted to pitch my film to, or me to, or you know, whatever. So you always want to be prepared. And you can have as many of them as you want. You can have them for different types of jobs. You can have them for projects of yours. You know, anything that you're developing, any films, if you wanted some kind of support, get a pitch going for it, an elevator pitch. Um, and hopefully these tools will help you. So who, who do you know? You know, there's lots of people in our lives that we think, oh, I don't, you know, networking, I don't know anybody. And you hopefully you'll meet more people in your, in your networking journeys. But um, people that, you know, people that you know or anybody you've worked for, and it could have been, um, you know, one of my high school jobs was at a Baskin Robbins. And, you know, you never know. Somebody, whether it's somebody that uh, was the employer or somebody that I worked with, you just never know where, um, where your um, contacts are gonna come from. Teachers, we are all incredible networking opportunities for you. We have worked in the industry, we go to the meetings, the industry meetings, we have lots of friends and we have friends of friends. And, um, and you know, we are really good resources for you. So use us, you know, come to our office, send us an email, ask us in class. Um, once you have a feeling of what you want to do, or even if you don't, um, you know, reach out to your instructors and say, what do you think I'd be good at for an internship, or what would be good, a good internship for me? We're, we're wonderful resources for you, and um, so please do, do use us. Um, your cohort, you know, look to your left, look to your right, the students that are in the room with you, grad students as well as, as undergrad, um, that's your, your, you know, your cohort, and they all, many of you work on projects together and you see who's right there and who's good and you know, who just knocks it out of the ballpark. Um, I was blessed this summer to uh, have Hen on a shoot with me and man, it was kind of like anytime I or the DP would be thinking of something, Hen's like, want this? <laughs> She's just like there with it, you know? So. Um, so anytime you need a glowing review, <laughs> don't hesitate. But, um, but you know, the students that you work with, you're in the trenches, you know. You may be up all night animating a project, working on the music, shooting or whatever, and, um, and your, your cohort can speak for you as well. Your squads. Everybody has various squads, whether it's um, personal life, professional life, um, after school life, whatever and probably you have a couple of different squads of, of people that you like to, um, to work with or that know, your, that know your work or your work ethic. Maybe they're not in a work um, situation, but they are people that can speak to your character and things like that. So don't, don't discount uh, anybody for that. And then people you've worked with outside of school. Um, various jobs again, like I mentioned, whether it's, you know, a high school job or a job that you may be doing now that's, you know, it's not in the industry, but it's somebody who knows and the people who know 
what you're, what you're capable of. Um, and then any school clubs, social clubs, churches, uh, church clubs or church organizations, volunteer positions, anything that you do. Um, even if it's, there's a disaster and you go work with Red Cross for a couple of weeks, you know, those people see you in the trench doing what you're doing under hard circumstances and it's all valuable things to put on your resume, to refer back to those people, so-and-so saw me do this, and let them vouch for you, you know, be part of your network, you know, or go to them and say, hey, you know, I'm not interested in just working in disaster work, but I'm a filmmaker and I want to make a film about blah, blah, blah. Do you have any, any you know, um, people that might be interested in that type of thing? You never know. So. Um, and then people you meet at professional organizations uh, or meetings. There are several of them here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Most cities always have some. There's the Dallas Producers Association. They cover everything from <coughs> uh, producers to actors, writers, um, behind the scenes, you know, audio, editing, uh, animators, um, uh, you know, just a variety of people. And they have meetings monthly. Um, and you can join any of the organizations, usually for a student rate, while you're still a student. Um, not sure how much theirs is. I know women in film, it's like $50 to join as a student. It's much cheaper than the, you know, whatever $100 it is for a non-student. And DPA has, has something, just look, you can check on their website. Um, it's also um, a student rate and will save you a lot of money. But anybody you know that you're meeting at these professional organizations at meetings, um, they they love to meet new people. They love to see people coming up in their careers, and um, don't think, oh, I don't know any of these people. They wouldn't want me. You never know. You know, there's a, you know, there's there's all kinds of opportunities at, at those types of um, social mixer type things. They also have um, uh, topical meetings. You know, where they'll talk about a certain topic. Um, different months and all kinds of things. There's also um, a uh, animation-based group called a bunch of short guys. <laughs> kind of a funny name, um, and but they're all you know all about animation, and they put on a, a yearly um, kind of a weekend event, and they bring in top animators from around the world, and they do workshops and um, uh, you know Q and As and things like that, and you, know, you could even uh, like volunteer for events, you know, I'll go pick somebody up at the airport or I'll, um, you know, usher them from the parking lot to wherever they're going to sit before they go out on stage, you know, that kind of stuff. And, um, and, the, and then you get into this, the event is an expensive event. So by volunteering, and they won't make you do a whole bunch of stuff throughout the whole thing, usually, um, but by volunteering you can get into this event for free <laughs> and uh, maybe even get fed, who knows and be able to experience and rub elbows with, with uh, some incredible talent. Um, Brenda Chapman was a uh, guest speaker a few years ago, and at the time I was the president of Women in Film, and I got the opportunity to like co-host and meet her, and she talked all about um, uh, the early days when she was at Disney, and then eventually, um, you know, making her, her uh, brave, you know, in other films and things. So, um, and then there's women in film, which uh, men join as well, and it's just women that sit on the board. But um, it's you know it's a co-ed organization, and there's other ones. There's a screenwriters organization. They're not as much of a, they're more of a um, writing club, so you can get feedback and, and give feedback that kind of thing. Um, so it's not as much getting jobs. DPA is great for getting jobs, um, and they have when you you don't have to join. They have a listserv that you can sign up for, and you can see jobs sometimes come across. Hey, we're looking for a PA on this shoot. We're looking for somebody to help run second camera, or I need somebody to do some editing or some animation. You never know. It's all kinds of things. So I would at least sign up for Dallas Producers Association, their, um, their listserv. And if you just go to their website, um, which I don't know what it is offhand, but Dallas Producers Association. Um, so, what is an elevator pitch? Uh, many of you have heard it, we just talked about it, um, and it's, you know, it's basically a concise and compelling introduction um, that tells the listener, whoever your captive audience is, who you are and or what you want. So it could be, 
I've got this great idea for a short film and I need seven thousand dollars. I think you're the person for it, you know, and this is why, you know. Um, and it may be somebody who, whatever your film's about, whatever you know, whatever your your pitch is, if it's your if you want a job, um, that they have something that you would want, and it may be the money to help fund the film. It may be a job at their organization. Um, so you want to. That's why I say create a couple of them, depending on what it is you're looking for in um, in in the world. You know, if you were to find, if you were to be in an elevator or a situation with somebody who could help you get it, what is it? Um, and you should try creating like a 30 second and a 15 second. Um, you could even try 45. So, uh, how to develop your pitch? So the first step is. Get a piece of paper, um, or you can do it on the computer. But uh, you know, start a document and write ten important things: a potential internship, employer, whatever it is, somebody with money who can fund your next project. Um, ten compelling things, really interesting things about yourself or your project that uh, that would interest this person, that would hook them in to listen to your, to give you 30 seconds, 45 seconds for your pitch. Um, so what do you do? Um, what have you achieved? Possibly. These are just some questions. I would start with these and just jot them down and then you've got them. And then as you start to think, is it a project? Is it a job? What is it that I want to be prepared to pitch with? Um, then you can start to tailor it and, and, and move it around a bit. What are your goals with the project, with the next job, with the whatever it is you're, you're thinking of with them? And focusing on things, focus on things that make you stand out. How are you unique? How are you positioned to help them in return for, for them helping you as well? So then the second thing you want to do is you want to take out any redundancies. If you're um, saying the same phrases over and over, um, if you hear a lot of similarities, um, you know, like look, you know, by writing these down, making a list, and ideally, really, I find pen to paper works in this kind of a process, this creative cerebral kind of a process, the best to do it on paper, and, um, and then look for those redundancies, take out anything that's unnecessary or unclear. If you're given a, a, a large background on, well, you know, when I was a kid, I, you know, it's like, unless it's something about, you're a short film about you as a kid, don't start at the very, very beginning. <laughs> Always start with what, you know, the most compelling thing about this project is. And then edit out any kind of broad statements. Um, all people love this type of film. That's general. <laughs> I don't think there's any one thing that all people love, you know. Um, and then enhance the good stuff, you know. And it's, you know, it's writing down stuff, but then it's also walking away from it, coming back to it, seeing what, oh, that's a little redundant. Oh, that's the really good stuff. I should move this around. And so it's a process. You know, you won't necessarily do this all in one afternoon. You might be able to, but um, it's a process, you know, to kind of jot, start to jot stuff down and then come back to it and refine it and go through it. So then the next step is to grab five index cards. Um, the, you know, standard little three by fives, bigger ones if you'd like, um, and label them with those five things. Who am I? Uh, what do I do? How do I do it? Why do I do it? And who do I do it uh, for? Right now, what do I do it for? That's right. Sorry. Uh, so, who am I? What do I do? How do I do it? Why do I do it? And what do I do it for? Why, why does this compel you? Why do, why do you want to animate? Why do you want to make short films or a feature film? Why, you know, just really, you know, write those at the top. And then each, on each, um, add each item from your list, that first list that you did, assign them to cards by category. Wherever they answer one of those questions, write it down. And hopefully you have about two of those per card. And um, if, if there are some gaps and you have a card and you're like, oh, I don't have anything about that, think about that question. You know, if it's the um, why do I do it and that's not in there, think about why do I want to make this film? Why do I like doing this kind of animation? Why do I, you know, want money from this person or a job? Why do I want to work at this place? Okay. 
And then, um, let's see, organize the cards in a logical order. Because the way you did that first list and then the way these cards are, you know, who am I, what do I do, that kind of thing, may not be the most compelling way um, for you to, to create that, that pitch to start out and, and to do that. So you want to organize it and you want to put the most important information first, the most compelling, because what if uh, suddenly the person, the, the elevator goes up to the first floor or the second floor and the doors open and the person gets off. You want to have at least grabbed them with some information so they maybe stay on. Or they say, come with me, you know, and you know, walk with me and finish, you know, finish telling me about it. So really put your most compelling information up first. And then add an interesting fact or statement, I'm sorry, stat, um, fact or stat, sorry, uh, to use at the beginning of your speech. You want to really, really engage in, as I said, because you want to intrigue your listeners and make them, ah, I'm at my floor, I'm gonna wait. Or they push it to go on up a few floors or, you know, whatever, or invite you to get off there. So that, that way they'll remember you. Always have like a business card or something, some way for them to reach you, on, on you, um, for this kind of situation, any kind of situation, it's always good to have it. So then practice it. Once you've got it written out, you've got the cards, you've got it on the cards, you've got it organized, you've kind of reworded it and reworked it and edited it and looked for the redundancies and added the compelling stuff at the beginning of it. Um, start to practice it. Do it with a friend um, or a classmate, somebody that you trust. Uh, you want to avoid any kind of long-winded or convoluted or fragmented sentences or information. So you really want it to flow. Because it's, you know, you're going to have to deliver this like an actor. And if it's got some words in there that you kind of stumble over, you always forget what it is, something like that, it's not going to flow as well as you really want it to. So, you know, think about that in that practicing and have your friend or your classmate listen for that. And then get feedback from somebody that you trust. You do it with your, your family, your siblings, whatever. Eh, they're going to say, yeah, that's really great. So do it with someone outside of your family that you trust, um, that will give you frank, that you know, that's that's um, going to be on enough, honest enough to say, mm, it's a it's a little flat, or it's not telling me the true you, or I want more of this. You know, you want the honest, honest feedback, um, and so you want them to be objective and constructive. And then revise after that, rewrite, make it perfect. You know, it's, like I say, it's a process. You don't want to just go through it uh, once and say that's it, and then you, you get on the elevator and you forget what it was. Then record it. Use your phone. You can do it in the bathroom and look at the mirror, um, and that's good because you're making that eye contact with somebody yourself, somebody you trust, somebody you're comfortable with. Um, but you know, you can put the um, recorder on and then hear yourself. You know, play it back and hear yourself in the delivery, and um, you want to make sure that it is um, friendly, non-threatening. I don't think anybody in here would make a threatening uh, elevator pitch, but you know, it's like it's it's conversational. You can do it threatening if you want, <laughs> um, and uh, and that you're make sure that you're not talking so fast that people can't understand what you're saying. You know. You want, to, you want to do it just at the right speed, and it could take, take a while. You're going to listen for any kind of repeating words. Hopefully you've caught those when you write it already. Um, and then make sure that you're sending the message you really want to send with your eyes, with the way you make eye contact with them. Um, just your presentation, physical presentation of it. And then uh, don't forget to breathe. Relax and breathe um, throughout and eyes. It's all about the eyes. You've got to look people in the eyes. So that's why I say do it in the bathroom mirror so that you can, you can get comfortable with it. You've done it on the cards, you've written it, you've rewritten it, you've done it with friends. Now you should be able to be um, where you can just, you've got it memorized, you know. And um, you just want to hit, hit the high points. You're not going to go into deep detail about the film. If it's a film and you want some money, you know, a project, you want some money for it, you don't want to start telling them it's a story about this 
and then this happens and then that happens and then by the end of it this will happen and you know that kind of a thing you just want to give them the high points it's a charming story about it's a thrilling mystery about and um, you know just the, just the basics and why you can do it why you're the uniquely the person that can tell this story but look them in the eyes because eye contact it reads as you're being honest and if you're asking somebody for something from them, money, time, something of value, they're not going to want to do it unless they feel that you're being honest with them. Um, they don't want somebody just telling them a story about, oh, this is how great it's going to be and what I'm going to do, and then run off with their money. So you want to really make that good eye contact. Last but not least, do it in the elevator. We've got four floors in this elevator here uh, that you can ride up to or down and uh, practice it in the elevator. And you may see, oh, the 30 second version is perfect. The 45 second, I'm not gonna quite make it. You know, the door's open before then. Um, excuse me, but practice in an elevator, you know, and if you need to find a taller building with a taller <laughs> elevator, that's great. Night times here, there's hardly anyone on the elevator. It's a good time to be able to ride it up and down and not have people getting on and off. Um, you can also practice it during the daytime when people are here, and then that also kind of helps you get over that, oh my God, somebody came in and blowing your stream of thought, you know, because you want to get comfortable in any situation, you know. You could be on a train, and it, you know, could be going back and forth when you get this opportunity, so you never know. So you want to be really, really comfortable with it. Um, any questions? I know that's a lot of information kind of fast. But I want y'all to just kind of work on it. And um, feel free to send me, you know, if you've got it, you've got made that list and you've organized it and you want to know, eh, how is this, you know, that kind of thing. I'm happy to give you feedback. If you want to come into my office, if you want to grab me in the hallway, <laughs> feel free to, um, to practice and to, to, you know, try it out. Um, but, you know, also, also find other audiences as well. But, you know, I want to help you in this process and get, get a really good elevator pitch for you. Um, an elevator pitch that if you were, you know, if I was to do one right now, I would say uh, it depends on, you know, like if I was at the Dallas Producers Association meeting and, they, and somebody said, oh, hey, who are you? I'd say, hi, I'm Patty Newton. I'm a uh, professor at University of Texas in Arlington. I'm a filmmaker, writer, producer, director, and uh, was formerly uh, president of Women in Film. I'm working on a project right now that's a proof of concept for a feature film, and I want X, Y, Z, or if I don't want anything, it's like just, you know, stop there. But if I'm looking for money or time or resources, somebody has a piece of equipment I really would love, you know, whatever it is. So I'm just kind of laying out uh, the street cred of it, and. Um, and then, you know, then the ask, basically, you know, I really want to work at your company, how about it? And, and literally, like, drop it in their, their, you know, lap so that they can say, yes, no, maybe, call my secretary, give me a resume, what's the email address, that kind of thing. So, all right, no questions? I answered them all <laughs> for you, great. All right, so um, our next part of tonight is some guest speakers. Because um, you know, the elevator pitch is all about an internship. Hopefully, uh, you can pitch about if you want to get an internship, but hopefully you can, there's other things that you'll be pitching about. I just want you to get comfortable with it. But um, the whole, whole thing that we're working on is internships and getting you plugged in. And um, this past spring, I had a class, and um, there were some students that really stood out in class for me um, that, you know, that just did exemplary jobs and um, were consistently, were consistent in their work and um, just everything you look for in, in a filmmaker, in a, you know, somebody that, you know, you want to bring on your projects and that you want your, um, your, uh, uh, integrity to be, you know, involved with. And so, a friend um, contacted me this summer and said, hey, I'm, I've got a, a commercial shoot. I'm looking for some, uh, a couple of PAs. Do you have anybody you could recommend? And uh, I immediately thought of these two people. And um, because they were so great in the class, 
and uh, and you know just it was summertime. Nobody reads their work or school emails. Who reads their school emails in the summer, right? Nobody reads their school emails. But that was I didn't have their phone numbers to contact them, and so I sent sent them emails they both responded right away and um, and so I plugged them into these this internship it was a, it was uh, my friend had said it's an unpaid internship it's a couple of days on a commercial you know doing PA work which can mean anything um, and, uh, and but they responded and so um, that's why I had said in the resume thing uh, event last last uh, month or, or a few weeks ago to always, what, what, any resumes, business cards, any contact information you put out there, make sure you're checking that email or that you listen to those voicemails at least, if not right away, I mean, as much as you can, at least you know within the day, um, because you don't want to um, put information out there and then you know three weeks later get back to the people. So, so with that, I will bring our speakers up, Ms. Natalie Marino, and Mr. Jabari Cadell are um, the two PAs. So, when was your internship? Um, uh, it was around June, June. 23rd. Yeah, to it was 24th. from the 23rd to the 24th. Okay, yeah. cool. Like, yeah. Cool. Um, and how did you hear about it? I just said, but go ahead. <laughs> Talk about your experience <laughs> with that. Yeah. Well, uh, Patty put us through to Aaron Holloway, who is a um, location scout, who was a location scout for the shoot. So um, we contacted him, and the day that um, we got in contact with him, we had to immediately go and get like COVID test and get the rapid test, and we were approved to work on the set. So that's how, that, that's how we were put through that. Okay. Um, and so what kind of an internship was it? Um, pretty much uh, PA work, production assistant work. We uh, we work with um, uh, a lot of the equipment, setting up video village, and putting up various equipment that didn't involve like grips or gaffer or DP equipment. Um, we were shuttling actors, and we were shuttling like the extras, the main actors and the crew members from set uh, to the parking lot and wherever they need to be, like different locations. Okay. And Natalie, did you have other other duties you were doing? Um, basically, same things as him. Um, just there's like a lot of actors and extras in there, so we were both like handling, um, sending them to the set, make sure they ate um, with the catering and everything, and make sure they're hydrated and ready to go to shoot. So. How was it um, working with complete unknown people and having to worry about them getting water and food and stuff like that? For, for you as a first timer on a set, was that your first time on a set? Yes, it was my first time. So can you talk about like psychologically, like adjusting to that moment? I know that went in the list of questions I sent yeah. y'all, but I think it's a value to kind of know, like you know, I'm thrown into this, you know, yeah. into this tank of, of fish. Mm -hmm. uh, I was super overwhelmed, but Jabari was there, so I knew him, but it was kind of overwhelming, but I kind of just had to take a breath in and was like, um, this would be like, my oyster, like this is like where I can start connecting with people and just like talk to them. So um, I just had to go in with a positive attitude and not be like shy enough to like reach out to them and be like, hey, like what do you do here? Like what's your important and everything? So just being open to any conversation, anyone who was on the set, you know, they're all, we're all there just to work. So I don't think they would mind to have a conversation with you or anything like that, so. Cool. Um, it was it was pretty nerve wracking at first getting on that, you know what I'm saying? Um, but Aaron, he's a former UTA student, he introduced us to a lot of the different crew members when we first got there in the morning. We were early enough, we got there early enough to meet everyone during breakfast to uh, introduce ourselves before we actually got in there, got out there on the field and started shooting. So that was um, that, that was kind of the icebreaker there. Um, but yeah, once, once I got on set, I just kind of started talking to people, asking questions. I'm a pretty, I guess, outgoing person, so I, I was able to just like walk up to someone and be like, Hey, what's your what's your job here? Like, just introduce myself. And um, I had a couple questions about PA because it was my first time being a production assistant. So um, I tried to ask the right people, like just the right questions, so I didn't look like a newbie. But um, but yeah, it, it was it was um it was nerve wracking at first. But then I kind of after a couple hours there, I kind of got comfortable with what I was doing. And 
and just try to go with the flow and keep my eyes and ears open to whatever they ask me to do. Cool, cool. Um, so what were some of the perks of, of the uh, of the of working there? Um, a lot of the perks were just the ability to network with people, um, discovering um, what people do on a professional production set, like how things work behind the scenes and how um, people from different realms of just like filmmaking or just like making media, how they all come together to like make commercials or how different environments of filmmaking with like making films or making television, making commercials, how they interact with one another and how different uh, the workflow is because with ads or making commercials, you're only uh, together for probably like a couple days or two to a week or whatever. With television, you're together for like a couple months and with a film, you may be like producing almost to like longer, at least longer than a television series or like with a television series, it may go longer. So it kind of overlaps one another. But like that whole environment, how people, people's attitudes on set are different when it comes to those various like uh, platforms of like media and so on. Okay. Other perks, Nelly? Um, I guess um, they did pay for our parking, so we didn't have any issues with that. Um, they also fed us, gave us breakfast and lunch right um yeah so i think that was most of what jabari said just networking and people were really nice there i know i don't think a lot of film people would be mean and like back off and everything but yeah um i think just like yeah networking was like really fun like to this day i still talk to people who was on who were on set with me so that made an amazing connection with me yeah, yeah. and you had also mentioned like uh walkie talkies and golf carts oh, yeah. earlier today mm -hmm. yeah um it was my first time having a walkie-talkie, and uh, and I forgot. I didn't. Ha I didn't. Everyone had surveillance, and I felt kind of like left out in a way. So I went to go purchase one. And um, golf carts. I was first time riding it, and I don't know. I felt like I was like the cool person, like a little tour <laughs> going around, like taking them to set, and, like just like talking to them, because you know at the end of the day we're all human, and we're just like we need to socialize and start doing that. So yeah, it was super fun. Cool. So is there anything um, that you wish you'd done differently while on the internship, in retrospect? Um, I don't think so. I think I really went inside and set like, uh, with positive attitude and just being open, meeting there wherever they needed me. And um, yeah, uh, I don't think I'd do anything different. Okay, did you borrow anything? Um, I'm kind of the same, same as Natalie. When I got there, I was, trying to like do my best, trying to make an impression with everyone. Um, uh, I can't really think of anything. I, uh, not to say I just like did a perfect job with everything there. I think I was just um, very aware of what was going on and kind of just um, tried not to make any mistakes. Uh, but I think we both kind of performed well on mm -hmm. the job and um, tried our best the entire time. And that's the best thing you can do is just try your best, especially with it being, your, being my first time, that time being a production assistant on a set like that, yeah. so. Yeah. yeah, and you know, like I mentioned, I sent the sent the emails, they happened to both read their email in the middle of summer. Natalie had graduated already, and she was still, you know, I didn't know I had a hold of her, <laughs> and, but I, you know, I thought, well, I'll try it, and sure enough, you know, fortunately, she, she had also checked her email. But as far as, um, you know, it's an unpaid internship is, is what uh, Aaron, the, my friend, had said, you know, it's gonna be unpaid, but they'll get some experience. And then um, all of that changed for you all, right? Yeah, um, they actually ended up paying us, um, like with the day rate, I guess, what, like 200, I believe. Yeah, we got sure. each day, and including overtime, because we ended up staying over the second day to clean up and like do all those different things. But I mean, it wasn't anything bad. Like, I feel like everything was worth it, like the time we spent there. It, I feel like it wasn't, it was time well spent throughout that whole experience. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah, so just for reading their email in the middle of the summer, um, they get you know 400 plus some overtime, free meals, <laughs> experience networking, you know. Um, so, so I think it's just a really great thing. So, is there any kind of preparation you um, wish you had for the you know before you did the internship? Um, yeah, so that it was my first time being PA. Um, I mostly like the people, other PAs being prepared. They had like a fanny pack, they had surveillance. Um, I had a bad 
uh, managing my walkie-talkie, I'd always leave it in the golf cart. So they would be like, you know, what's your, t- what's your 20? And I'm like, oh. <laughs> Jabari sometimes would be like, where are you at? <laughs> and I'm like, oh, man. Um, but yeah, I think uh, just having a fanny pack, having hand sanitizer, lotion, just anything necessary, necessary for like actors or anybody on set who just needs something, just being hands-on, on standby. Um, and then just probably a surveillance. Sometimes it might be crowded and you can't hear when people are like talking to you. So um, yeah, I would say. So what is surveillance? They, everybody oh. may not know. Um, it's uh, another like uh, mic that goes into your ears so you can uh, listen more better. Because walkie talkie could be like right here and you couldn't listen to it and everything. So it's just to make sure you hear it and stuff. So. Headphone kind of thing. Um, another thing, like, prepare for the weather as well, because it was really hot out there. So, like Natalie said, we like lotion, hand sanitizer, like, maybe, like, some sunscreen. Um, and just in case, like, you know, if it's in, like, cold condition, wear, like, stuff according to, like, the weather is going to tell you it's going to be, yeah. Because um, the heat was definitely, uh, um, it was definitely hot out there because it was, like, the middle of the summer. So, um, what I wore, I just wore, like, shorts and a shirt, a t-shirt, and um, some comfortable shoes because um, I was on my feet all day yeah. and just like a fanny pack and had and they supplied they supplied us with plenty of water to craft services so whenever you needed water like they had an endless supply of water bottles and stuff to cool. keep you like well fed and well hydrated yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah so I think uh, just dressing your dress code for like PA uh, just depends on the company you work so for that day we were just uh, dressing comfortably, but um, I think like after that, like I had a 7-Eleven commercial, and mm-hmm. one day we had to dress comfortably, and then the next day the client came, so we had to be professionally aware, uh, dressed. Not to where like you're like uncomfortable, but like just having comfortable stuff, but it's business casual in a way. So it's just mostly depending on the production company and like who's coming and who was there. So. And that's uh, the advertising world is more like that. They're very, especially here in Dallas, they're more clued into what you're wearing uh, when the client's around. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a, a, my hairdresser it does hair and makeup for uh, for films, and she um, was pregnant, and her boss that she worked with said, "You know what? We can't have you around the set for a while." <laughs> which is like a really hideous thing. But it's like the, the ad world is completely different from features or TVs. Much more casual, you could wear jeans and t-shirts every day if that's, that's what the weather and comfort dictated. But yeah, the ad world's like very, very different. And I love that you, that you brought that up, you know, to, the, to that thing. So, you know, like some, you know, commercials, you know, guys would have to wear, you know, suit and tie. And it's like, you really don't want to do that kind of yeah. work with a tie especially so um so uh was there any what was the best thing about the internship would you say um i would say just talking to people uh, a couple of pas they're kind of like our age um so they weren't um well there's mostly yeah there's some older and then young um and i think i think there was five of us in total right around five or six so um yeah we would just be on standby together and um just like chit chat like what we've like worked around with and uh, at the end of the night, I think we, everyone got each other's numbers, and from time to time, they still hit us up, and they're like, hey, like, do you want a PA for this, and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, I think just networking, and then networking with the producers. Um, the question was the... Uh, what was the best thing about it? Oh, um, yeah, yeah, just that, mostly. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> yeah, going off of what Natalie said, just building the connections to uh, those different people, because everyone... Uh, on set was pretty much friendly, open to like uh, building a connection with us. Like they knew we were trying to get into film or whatever we were filming soon, so they were like, "Okay, um, let's get your phone number. Let's chat after this whole thing's over and uh, see if we can get you on some more projects." So everyone there was pretty much friendly. I, I can't say that um, every project you go do outside of school or whatever may be friend. People are friendly as they were, but. Um, it was just great connecting with people that were um, that were in that in our industry that were able to just like help us and like willing to talk to us and um, help us grow. So it was it was overall just a great experience. I enjoyed every bit of the whole the whole experience. Cool. Was uh, is there a worst thing about it? Um, like I said earlier, I think the heat was pretty much the only yeah. bad thing. 
like just being out there in the sun. Um, how they had like the set, like where it was placed. So I think they strategically placed it um, in the main courtyard of SMU where it was like in the shade. So a lot of the equipment was in the shade. And most of the time when we were shooting, we were in the shade, but there were some shots that required us to be somewhere out in the sun. So, um, you know, it was just the heat. The heat was pretty much the only bad experience, I guess. But I mean, overall, I don't think anything about it was really just bad. So yeah, yeah, I enjoyed it. Okay. Um, uh, for me, I would say crew call because crew call was like at seven in the morning, and it was in Dallas. So um, you know, but that's how film is. You start early, you know, and late. Um, but yeah, I remember Patty in the producing class. Um, she'd like never get on there on time. You have to get there like fifteen minutes or 30, uh, 30 minutes early just to make a good impression, and that's what me and Jabari did. Um, so I think we, I think I woke up like around five, maybe four. So. Wow. Yeah, we got there like an hour early. Yeah. Wow. So, um, yeah, but it was fun. I think I had like a lot of energy throughout the day. And, yeah. Um, so I thought I was going to get tired, but I really didn't. Like yeah. he said, there was a lot of shade, so, and a lot of water. So we all just made sure we stayed hydrated. Yeah. Um, so what suggestions do you have for anyone considering doing an internship now? You know, if they're thinking, oh, I want to get an internship. What would your? Um, as of right now, uh, to this day, I still do freelancing, and uh, Patty mentioned uh, to join Facebook groups. Uh, I know it's like kind of like intimidating, just reaching out, trying to connect with somebody through LinkedIn, but it's honestly been um, pretty good for me, uh, just connecting with people and like messaging, like, hey, what do you do? And just having like kind of like an elevator pitch, but through online, kind of in a way, just to like help you out. Um, but yeah, joining Facebook groups and like sending them your resume, uh, they'll reach out to you and just think about it. Um, and I think women in film in Dallas have a Facebook group too, and mostly new people join and they ask a couple questions, so um, don't ever hesitate to like ask. I think they're like a very friendly group and mm -hmm. everything like that. Um, but yeah, I think Facebook groups and LinkedIn is probably the best way to grab an internship early on. Cool. Yeah, and just to add on to what Natalie said, just building the connection with your profession as well, because of course we got the opportunity through Patty um, and our professors here in our department. They know a lot of people in the industry and out here in Dallas, so kind of talking to them and getting to know like um, who they can, who you can like connect with through through them, building that trust, so they can trust you to go out on a job with who they know or like their. Um, that whoever they send you to, they can trust it. Okay, you can do a good job, so I'm going to recommend you to go out here and get some get an opportunity to do something like we did, or something even more than that. So, just um, connect with your professors um, because they know a lot more people than um, than you think. Like they're well connected throughout um, the industry. So, cool. And I think um, I think what you know one of the things that stood out for both of, on both of y'all for me is a humility, a humbleness that you have. And I knew that you would um, represent UTA well, and because sometimes, not at this school, sometimes in the past, I've had students that kind of would go onto a set and they like knew everything. And it's like, oh, don't do that. <laughs> you know, like, you know, remain teachable. I remain teachable even now in my lifetime. <laughs> you know, like, and I think that kind of uh, humility helps um, people go, oh, you know, like you didn't, uh, you know, what's your 20? You, you know, didn't have the, the uh, uh, walkie-talkie with her. And, you know, some people would like, you know, get upset about that, but they, I'm sure, understood. <laughs> you know, first timer and, and you're trying and you're doing your best. And you're, you know, it's like if you're over there having a cigarette and just talking to friends or something, it probably could have been a different, a different scenario. But it's that uh, humility or humbleness that you approach um, any kind of thing like that. And so I read that in y'all in, in the class, just in how you carry yourselves as mature adults, um, that you would be a good fit. And so I think that's an important trait for everybody in um, you know, internships and in life you know, to a certain extent. I mean, there's times to be, you know, have that bravado and the, you know, I'm the rock star. And that's like when your film has just screened and you won the award. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> um, but oh uh, yeah, adding on to that, um, I think there was a lot of PA like there's PA office, PA catering, PA a lot of stuff, and I think Jabari in the morning he was mostly working camera, and then I was yeah. golfing. So just being open to people, um, 
well, golfing, like shuffling, golf yeah, golf carts, <laughs> um, just sending people uh, on set and everything. But um, yeah, I think just being open to any, like wherever they need help at. Um, mostly I was in craft services, and then I was helping out catering, just being open to everything, not just being like, no, I wanted to just work on camera or like just with the producers, being open to everybody um, and just needing where they need help um, is super important. Have you stayed in touch with uh, Aaron and or anyone that you met on these? Um, yeah, not Aaron. Uh, I have been in touch with a producer. Her name was Kirsten. And um, after that, uh, the set, uh, I I think I texted them the next morning. I was like, thank you guys so much for the opportunity. Um, something like, kind of like a long message. And I had fun working with you. And then just having them know that I was there and I was helping out and she replied like really quickly and was like, I'm going on vacation for two weeks. Um, just call me again, like if I can put you on your radar, stuff like that. Um, I haven't reached out yet, but um, just Do I, it. Yeah, but I probably <laughs> should. Um, and then she'll probably like reach out, and give me a couple PA jobs and stuff. Yeah. Erin, um, I have not, but another PA who was working with me, his name is Pedro. Mm -hmm. um, he, I worked on a film with him a couple weeks ago. Um, so yeah, I was a production coordinator for his film. Um, so yeah, I think just being in touch with everybody and keeping each other's numbers is super important. Um, oh, I, this um, uh, girl, Vanda, <laughs> she, um, she PAs for like events, so she was uh, doing a EDC PA like in Las Vegas, so she kind of invited me out there. So she was kind of like a, ro a lot around there, um, but they didn't call me back, so I didn't go. <laughs> but um, yeah, like the opportunities, there's all around, like film, events, commercials, anywhere people just got around and come together and then scatter around you know yeah so um yeah that's cool. it for me Jabari, have you stayed in t contact with anyone yeah with the uh with pedro i stayed in contact with pedro he helped me actually get a um, pa job afterwards um i guess i think it was maybe a couple weeks afterwards um with uh, a pain company and um i got paid for that uh gig as well um but um but yeah i think i think um the people that we did like get in contact, I mean, get to know on camp on on the set. Like, I haven't contacted anyone else, but um, I mean, yeah. I'm sure that's still like if I were to hit them up today and introduce yeah. myself as, yeah. hey, I worked on this one, so with with you, blah blah blah, blah and I think yeah. they'll be pretty welcoming of like you know, yeah, hooking us up with anything. Yeah, and you and you can always uh, stay in touch with like either it's a you know just just wanted to touch base if you have any jobs or it can be I've got this project and had a quick question for you about it what do you think of this or would you read my script or it can be anything you know because people love to be wanted and um, so you know just anything to stay on the radar and just you know if they they may say oh, I don't have time if especially it's a feature script. Um, but, you know, you want to kind of just gently keep that door open so that, um, you know, I know that, you know, I'll get, you know, calls for, you know, needing somebody for something. And it's the people that we just, you know, were in contact with that surface up, you know, and it may have, there may have been somebody, you know, that I uh, talked to a year before, but it's like that name's not right on my mental Rolodex, you know, and it's like Natalie Jabari, boom, <laughs> you know. So I'm just staying in touch with people that way and they're kind enough to come out and and, and uh, volunteer tonight to speak and today they were also at the noon um, which is you know just an incredible giving of yourselves and so I really really appreciate that um, is there anything in retrospect anything you do differently knowing what you know now about the um, internship experience Um, I don't think there, there's much. I mean, um, since I'm still a student, you know, um, I think if I were to be out of school, I would have been more adamant about, like, contacting mm. those people. Like, just like Natalie. Natalie's been really good with, like, yeah. getting from, going from job to job, too. Um, but, um, but I think, I think that whole experience, I, I guess I maybe just, like, handled it pretty well. Um, and I think going forward, uh, I learned a lot from it, so it was, yeah, a, yeah, you know. yeah, cool. Um, I think uh, that was like the best job I could have at my first gig graduating. Um, I 
I kind of got like lost in a way because I just kept applying the things that like didn't make sense um, for me, and I think that was a good opportunity. So I want to thank you, Patty. Um, and that just really put myself in the door and just always coming in with positive attitude, reaching out to people. Um, so that kind of put my foot in the door with um, film and everything. Um, that time on set, I didn't bring my fanny pack or a surveillance, so um, that's what I would take um, for mm -hmm. other jobs and stuff. That's a different thing. Yeah. 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 Well, cool. I'm, you know, I, I just, I'm so glad that y'all were able to do it. Again, it was an, it was advertised or presented to me as an unpaid. They wound up getting paid. It's like everybody wins, and uh, and then have gotten other jobs from it. So, you know, as far as internships, there's school credit ones, there's paid ones, there's unpaid ones, and you never know, you know, what it's going to lead to. And so, you know, if any opportunities come your way, um, if it works for your schedule. It's not going to, you know, cost you money to go fly halfway across <laughs> the world or something, and you can do it. It may be, you know, like for the animators, it may be a live action thing. You still may learn something, you know, and vice versa. Live action people, it may be an animation-based uh, project uh, where they need somebody to put on the motion capture outfits and kind of, you know, rehearse or do something, you know, so that, you know, people can uh, draw and, and create their, their art from it. So you never know, you know, and I would say approach them with open, open minds and, you know, the worst, you know, case scenario, you give up a day or, you know, a couple of days, maybe you make some money off of it, you know, but you've got that, at least a line on your resume from it, you know, which is always, always a plus. Any questions for our guest speakers from anyone? Yes. Ken. Uh, what are you working on right now and where do you see yourself? Know, five, ten years, what are you working towards? Uh, that is a good question. I'm going to repeat the question into oh, the mic if you uh, would. The, the question was um, where am I working at and where I see myself in five to ten years. Um, as of right now, I am a, a video production coordinator for a healthcare company called Calibri. Um, where I see myself in five Boom. years? Boom. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, Drop the mic on it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do really want to get into um, streaming services, so hopefully, maybe flat, so I have opportunities in Atlanta or California or wherever they may take me. On those Facebook groups, they do offer, you know, those type of um, things, so they just need people like up front and everything. So um, I feel like if I had time to go through it and be there for two months, I would but I do have a full-time job. <laughs> but they are very lenient uh, with stuff. Um, I do work from home, so um, they said as long as I work my 40 hours, I can go freelance. So um, that's what I mostly do. Sweet. Um, so yeah, super good opportunity. First good job after graduating. Um, so yeah, I think um, I do want to work for like HBO Max. That's like my goal, five to 10 years. Okay. Um, so. Yeah, hopefully I come back in five years. <laughs> <You'll be laughs> right? In HBO, so. I'm gonna hold yeah. you to it. <laughs> um, right now I'm still a student here at UTA, but I am uh, working as an intern under uh, Bart here for its Rio Fest, and I'm also um, thanks to Patty, I have another opportunity to work with the Sagasi Group, who, who is creating a project for Arlington to work with. Um, um, cre they're creating a film about uh, the lower end uh, part of Arlington. And the black history behind uh, certain uh, uh, lower end neighborhoods. And um, I'm also working on a job that I started at the beginning of the summer um, for um, for a program here at UTA, a building bridges program where we're creating uh, uh, awareness for the environment and the architecture and how that all meshes together. Um, but I also see myself as an editor. Um, whenever I graduate, working as an editor, um, for uh, whatever company I'm luckily, luckily to um, land a job with, um, I want to work towards uh, building up my skill set so I can um, be more of a uh, asset to whoever company I apply, apply, apply for. Um, but then also, like maybe in 10 to 15 years, I see myself as uh, not only an editor, but um, a director, or a writer, someone creating uh, films to like my own feel and my own essence of like telling my story like how I edit and how I write my stories. So cool. I feel like editing and working on that is gonna be my gateway into the industry and 
how I want to get there is through that. So, like I said, um, since uh, I like during the internship, I introduced myself as a student first, and then saying that okay, I'm here to get experience. So kind of warming myself up to them, and not kind of just uh, playing, just walking up and saying, hey, how do I do this? But um, introducing myself first and uh, finding the right moments in time during the set because of course everyone is really busy. It's a professional um, film set. Um, I found the right moments and when like people weren't busy, I felt mm -hmm. I found the time to just ask them certain questions and like ask them questions about the industry. Like I said, I was asking them, hey, what do you do? What sets have you worked on? And just um, um, just getting their story, getting getting an understanding of what they do and then how do they work and like float around in the industry to get jobs and different things. So that's that's kind of how I did it. I mean, it may work differently for other people, but um, that's kind of how I interacted with those professionals that were there on set. Um, yeah, just kind of just warming yourself up to them, finding the right moments to hold a conversation with them because working as a PA uh, on the job, you don't want to be someone that like is talking all the time because they will be like, hey, like pay attention or like, um, so you want to kind of uh, be listening and keep your eyes and like, ears open to whatever's going on. Um, be very cognizant of like your surroundings and then just find the right moments to be like, okay, it's, no one's doing anything or like sort of a break. Um, someone standing next to me is like the gaffer or the grip. Like, I mean, just ask a couple questions to get some insight on just like, you know, the whole industry and just different things. So yeah. is, that, is that sort of answer? Okay. <laughs> cool. And sometimes when they uh, like sometimes give breakfast or lunch, it's just like literally like a cafeteria. You can literally go sit with anybody, you know, just ask them like, hey, like fine if I sit here and then that'd be a perfect time to like, Mm -hmm. um, talk to them. So I think I did that for the 7 Eleven commercial yeah. and I got a lot of information from a uh, producer. And during that like little lunch time too, it did feel kind of like high school in a way because it was a table where the directors and the producer were sitting. So you probably don't want to just go over there and sit down in between them when they're discussing the thing, uh, everything that's going on. But yeah, that, that's a pretty good time to sit down and talk to people because people are usually vulnerable during that time and they're just chilling out and just trying to grab yeah. something to eat. So that's yeah. a really good time. And a lot of times uh, the directors and producers will sit with the actors. And so you do want to kind of give that it's hallowed ground yeah. And but everybody else is pretty much fair game hair, makeup, wardrobe, art department, grips, electric, sound. They're just they don't have a business lunch, so to speak. So, yeah. um, you know, it's just kind of like, can I sit here? You know, <laughs> and, and usually they kind of like new blood, you know, somebody <laughs> that the, they're not going to have to listen to the same story about, you know, <laughs> their friends and stuff. And they get, you know, new people like, ah, so. uh, were there uh, another question? Yeah. Um, do you guys know of any uh, internship opportunities that maybe is your own semester, or um, if not, if you don't know of any uh, place where you can look for reliable Um, I know Patty is uh, sending out emails about um, different opportunities. Uh, that's how I got onto the one with the Sagasi group uh, that's going on right now. Um, I guess just like, like talk to your uh, professors or um, I don't know exactly any reputable sites except for what Natalie she mentioned Facebook groups that um, that are like part of the film industry. Like I guess they they usually make like posts or anything, or she can probably tell it better herself. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah so they're just like um, you know in search of you know crew, and sometimes like internships are probably like two three days. Um, so we cut off. Uh oh. Maybe the battery died. Okay. Um, but yeah. Um, <laughs> Mostly it's just like two, three days. It's just depending. They give you like a time, date, and stuff like that. Um, also LinkedIn, they have like the little category for jobs um, and internships as well. And then just connecting with people. Um, and then also Patty, and I think Chen Yi, I think the professor name, he sent an email in the summer that I saw like um, something about a San Diego documentary. I think mm -hmm. you remember? Yeah. So um, yeah, I think just like most of your professors will probably know a lot of people and like reach out to them and then also LinkedIn, Facebook groups. I think those are your best three options. Yes. And there's Handshake uh, yeah. available here on campus um, through the Lucky Martin Career Center that you have access to. If you haven't set up an account, you can do it with your email, your UTA email. But, um, uh, you know, reach out to me and I'll help, I'm happy to help you like get your resume together, refine it, whatever stage you're in and get it ready to, to start sending out to 
places and then also uh, help you identify. And that we will cover that topic um, in another um, meeting. I think it might be next, the next meeting, which is the October 11th Monday meeting. It's going to talk about um, recommendations and finding internships. But it's kind of a, it, it's a process. You know, you really want to have that elevator pitch. You want to have that resume ready to go um, because they may ask for it. If they don't, you know, in this case, they didn't ask for resumes, but you had your elevator pitch of I'm a student and I'm doing this and, you know, that kind of thing. And so you want to kind of refine that um, before you go in cold to a new situation and then suddenly like, I don't know, you know. So reach out to me. I'm always around. If I'm not, I will be, you know, just email me. So we'll set up a time, that kind of thing. So. Another question. Not, not a question but I want to add. Um, are, th are there animation majors in here? Okay, because DreamWorks just opened up their internships. And I'm not saying to go apply because you may or may not have the experience, but just go on their site, look at their qualifications, and start building those skills to apply next year. Because they have it every spring, summer, and fall. So if you, can, if you don't apply this semester, you can apply next semester. And they're virtual, so you don't have to go to LA, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so I would look into that. And in terms of I think animations are a little, animation internships are a little easier to find because usually companies will post it. So Disney had internships that were virtual, DreamWorks. Um, just because you're in Texas doesn't mean you can't work for them. So I would look into direct companies like that too. Even like CBS, Warner Brothers, they also have internships. Yeah. That's one place for y'all. And film commissions. Um, if you go to the Texas Film Commission, which I sent that link out in the last batch of resources a couple weeks ago. Um, if you were here, if not, email me and let, let me know and I'll send it to you. Um, but the Texas Film Commission has tons of gaming. They need lots of animator, gamer type people <laughs> for internships, you know, so, and virtual. So it, yeah, it's Austin, but it, you know, it's like, if it's virtual, it's might as well be Arlington. <laughs> so, all right, well, thank you both of you for coming tonight. I appreciate it. And uh, thank you all for being here and for your great questions. Yeah. And uh, again, pnewton at uta.edu if you have any questions, needs, wants, let me know and let's get together and figure it out. I want to get you connected. Internships is my game. So thank you and thanks for being here, y'all. Yeah. <laughs>